October the 24th, 2023. I'm going to be your host tonight, Dana Drumford. I hope you're doing okay on this Tuesday. I wasn't going to do a video. And I just shot a 40 minute video and forgot to turn the audio up. So now I'm going to shoot a short video to get something out. Oops, uh, I was, wasn't feeling very good. Um, but that changed uh, just about an hour and a half ago to a little trick. I'll show it to you in a few seconds. Atmospheric transport of iodine-131, 137 cesium from Fukushima. Atmospheric transport of cesium. So the official story is nothing got out of Fukushima on tritium, and it's just 2.2 grams, and it's in a thousand tanks, so there's nothing to worry about. But uh, the reality of it is, they're pretending they're in a building that don't exist, which is Reactor 4, and Reactor 3 and 4 have lost their inventories, their reactor cores and decades of reactor cores and fuel pools at the top of the buildings are gone also. The official story is one sixteenth of that coin and tritium will be released each year, and then nothing has ever gotten out of the buildings. And there's four of these buildings. I'm only showing you two. So what happened was, a couple hours ago, less than two hours ago, was I was watching this little video. I wasn't going to do a show because my throat was so raw. And I've been, you know, I got the flu for now like three weeks, right? But I also got, I discovered... I got other health issues that I'm going to get dealt with in the next couple of weeks. And so there'll be some downtime coming up. Um, and I'll, I'll let you know about that at, when the time comes, the time's appropriate. Okay, all of you, so this doctor, well, I'll let him, I'll let him tell the story, then I'll tell you what I've done. All of you know that water is H2O. Two H's and one O, right? That's water. Okay? Okay, now, if you add one extra O, and what have you got? Now you have H2O2, and that's peroxide, right? And that's what we use. We use a lot of the hydrogen peroxide. And what it does, number one, it kills germs and viruses. Okay, very good. And number two, it kills tumor tissue, cancer. It happens that peroxide is very cheap. Very cheap, very effective, very useful. Guess what orthodox doctors think of it? No good. It's too cheap. Before we give anything to a patient, it's me first. You ever hear an oncologist say that for chemo? <laughs> Wonder why. We use the peroxide. We give every patient when they come a bottle of peroxide to rub on their bodies every day, at least once, preferably twice. Because, like every other thing you put on your skin, it's absorbed right into the bloodstream, and right away, this extra oxygen radical goes into the bloodstream. And it helps to kill germs and viruses, and it helps to kill tumor tissue, and it helps to oxygenate and ozonate the blood, and it helps to combine the free radicals. Very valuable. And so my throat was raw. What I done was I just took some peroxide, poured it in my hand. I, I covered the top of my head, my face, not heavily, uh, but not too bad. And cut my face, my throat, my chest, and then both arms. And uh, within 30 seconds, uh, I was breathing like really good. I was like, wow, that can't be happening that quick. Uh, but it did. And... So he gives his patients a big bottle, and he wants them to do it twice a day, right? But uh, that actually just worked for me. And I was using lemon and lime and ice cubes and cold water and taking sips to cool my throat. And what I, I got a trick, the trick I use is I have um, 
I use salt, and I take a little couple of little grains of salt, put it on my tongue, and then take a little sip of water, and that helps the water get in the molecules, and uh, it makes a big difference. I can tell you that, and gives you a lot of uh, mobility back, right? And so I figured everybody might enjoy that because most people can afford a three dollar bottle of peroxide, and I'm not kidding you. That's what I. That's all I done. And normally you're doing, you're doing like the cough syrup, and you got, you got the concoctions, of lime and lemon mixed up, and the nice cubes and, and slices. Of, I use slices of uh, lemons too, right? Just just a thin slice chopped into four pieces and drop it in, with a lot of ice, and that little sip will cool my throat. But all I done was put this stuff over my throat, and. You know, I put it on my face and my head because I, I went mad, right? To go, let's see if we can get some kind of result. And within 30 seconds, I stopped hacking. It's unbelievable. And I just shot a 38-minute video with no audio. <laughs> my voice was doing fine. So this is just going to be a 10-minute video, maybe. Geological evidence of tsunami in the past 3,800 years. So why would you build a tsunami? Um, reactors where there's a 3,800 year legacy of massive tsunamis and because you know 60 kilometers off the coastline is the tectonic plates so they have thousands and thousands of earthquakes each year also why would you build a nuclear plant now the prevailing winds they know blows right to America because remember they sent all those balloons with weapons on it across the ocean so they're quite familiar with how the winds work right in the Second World War. So how, and now officially the 30 million one ton bags no longer exist. The reactors have no longer melted down. That's the new official word. The reactors no longer melted down. And this is a, from July the 13th, uh, the first English version that we read, and we've covered nonstop since July the 13th. The authors are Professor of the Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering. Well, if he if he don't know, who knows, right? And he's saying that only two point or three grams of sugar got out of the destroyed and missing reactors, and that the amount of tritium was two point two grams. And don't worry, because only zero point zero six two grams, zero point zero six two, which is equal to. Take 1.32 grams of salt, chopping it 22 times, and that's how much one of them is how much is coming out of the 1,000 tanks each year, is what they're saying. Despite the fact that 55 countries banned food from 14 prefectures, not just Fukushima, but 14 prefectures, and in this picture, they're growing food within a couple of miles of the plant where it's nuclear wasteland, totally abandoned, right alongside of one-ton bags of radiation, and they have over 30 million of them. But some sources will tell you 60 million. There's about 60 million tons of contaminated soil that's being stored. 60 million, according to Al Jazeera. So each of these reactors, uh, just a single one of these reactors, not counting the fuel pools, the two fuel pools were at the top of these buildings, but just one of these reactors is worse than all nuclear meltdowns known in history combined. At the top of them was around 10 reactor cores with no containments. They're still splitting the atoms, the same as a reactor in a core, except there's no containment, right? And so each uh, nuclear power plant, we call them disease factories. First off, they're surrounded by farms, and second off, the fuel pools are still splitting the atoms. And so they're boiling off about 120,000 liters of insidious radioactive water per liter each day into the environment. Okay. Uh, I just want to touch on a couple of studies, and we'll let you go back to your regular night. I wasn't going to do a show because my throat was raw. Now that we found this little trick, and it actually works, it's not a trick, it's that's real, that's magic. That's real life magic, right? That's, that's real life magic. I'm completely blown away that within 30 seconds, I was breathing normal when I can barely breathe. And I had this dry hack all day long. It was torture. Uh, trend of 137 concentrations in the river water. And so they're not talking about tritium. They're talking about cesium-137. 
But they didn't abandon the communities because of Cesium 137. They banned it because of all the other isotopes. Now, remember, each liter of water that they were measuring was two sieverts per hour, uh, per liter. And what that means is that a gallon of it will kill everybody that walks past it for a million years. So imagine putting that stuff in the tanks. Well, if you fill up a tank with just, uh, because it, you can't just have beta, it's a meltdown. You're going to have everything, alphas, gammas, neutron bombardments, beta rays. And, but let's just say it's only beta. Well, that's 1.4 million sieverts. Three sieverts is a lethal dose. 1.4 million sieverts in a tank is a lethal dose. You can't build any other tanks, see? Eh? And so they picked up 30 million one-ton bags, but now officially that don't exist anymore. That was only 3% of the land. And so what we're talking about is so unbelievably scary and you see the word tritium there? They're not looking for tritium. Tritium's not in any, well, it is, but that's not what they're acknowledging in these bags. You don't pick up 30, uh, it was 20 billion US or something. You didn't spend 20 billion US picking up tritium. Everything is tritium. Radi wherever radioactive fallout is, the rainwater becomes tritiated. And so they decided to hoodwink the entire planet. There's perpetual studies, I guess so many studies in Fukushima. And some of them do mention tritium, but that's just to downplay it, right? That's the industry. A lot of these studies are meant to downplay it. But the amount of studies we're talking about, you're talking about a billion dollars worth of studies, and the whole idea is to downplay it. Oh, it's not this bad. And this was an interesting study. Nationwide increase. Uh, and what, I can't even pronounce that word right now, but what, it, what, it, what that means is children are being born with one or no testicles, a nationwide increase, 2018. And the only thing that could possibly be a catalyst for that would be radioactive fallout. Now, 2018, but there was another problem with nationwide increase was congenital malformation. And this showed up and manifested in a study in 2019, the year after this one, where um, out of 100,000 children, 14.2%, 14,200 children needed open heart surgery. These are just inconceivable catastrophic numbers we're talking about. And so that, that's a great addition for a study. We should put that in where we can find it. So bear with me one second. Because we go through so much material on this site. It's absurd. It's a couple hundred thousand pieces of information each year. And so this study, or this story, climate change will affect gender ratio among newborns, which is we're talking about the males to females sex ratio, which is the studies you look for after radioactive fallout. And where's this place? Japan. And climate change is caused by 80 years of radioactive emissions, by the way. Let me just explain that because that sounds pretty crazy. I'm pretty sure to those who don't understand how this works. I have a unique way of articulating it, and I'll do that for you in a moment. We're almost ready. Again, we have so much documentation. The problem is I'm like a pack rat. I never throw anything away. So th this is reactor three, for instance. I mean, it ejected the reactor cores and the fuel pools, but officially nothing got it only 2.2 grams. The plume, that's 20 days of fallout. That's 26 days altogether. That's six days after the last reactor blew up. So that's, um, that's the plume that covers the entire planet in 20 days. So think of a snowstorm. And at the end of 20 days, it covers the entire planet. It never stops snowing, and the snow never melts. Then flip that and say, for 80 years, that's what the nuclear industry does from 400 nuclear power plants worldwide, not counting the dumping, not counting the accidents, not counting um, a lot of things, right? There's so much emissions going on, it's hard to do it in a single video, and this is not going to be one of them. Okay, so radioactive fallout, you got a, you got a plume covering the planet, 
Think of it as a snowflake, but you can't see it or smell it or hear it or feel it or taste it or perceive it. But think of it as snowflakes, and each snowflake, and snowflakes are just far apart. Now, this stuff can pulse energy 50 feet away, but this stuff is just far apart. You know, snow falls, right? So it's pulsing energy like an explosion in every direction, every second. Each snowflake pulses energy, pure energy. And the speed is almost the speed of light. That's pure energy. It does that forever, and it never goes away. But you can't see it or smell it or hear it or feel it or touch it. And your Geiger counters can't pick it up. Only some gamma. Uh, strontium-90, by the way, in the soil... After the first thousand days, strontium-90 uh, is a 100 to 1 ratio of the cesium-137. And that persists for at least tens of thousands of days. Uh, cesium transfer of the canopies on the forest floors in four years following Fukushima. And so suggesting that nothing got out of Japan's melted reactors, only plutonium, I'm sorry, only uh, tritium, these bags are not, f you know, 30 million one-ton bags. You didn't abandon the communities for tritium. But because I freaked up, the little show that I planned to do was supposed to be half an hour, turned in 38 minutes, turned out I had turned the volume off at one point to play a clip, and I didn't turn the volume back on. And that's because I, I was very unwell all day, and I wasn't going to do a video, but once I took the hydrogen peroxide, put it on my chest and throat, and within 30 seconds, I had my voice back and I wasn't hacking my guts up no more. I mean, I, I, I'm just blown away. I'm just blown away. And I felt I better come here and share that much with you anyway. And I wanted to show you all, you know, give you a concept that all these studies actually exist. And I'm just going to blast through a whole bunch here and then we'll call it a show. But all these studies are on Fukushima. And a lot of them are downplay Fukushima. They picked up 30 million one-ton bags, not because you're bored, but, and look at that picture that time. And, and some of these, their feet are not even touching the ground. These are Photoshop. I don't know why they bothered to Photoshop. Look at all the people they got here. Now, allegedly there's 7,000 people on the site each day, and that they burned 7,000 paper suits a day. Paper suit can't protect you. And two sievers a liter in these tanks is 1.4 million sievers. means you can't build another tank there. And why is everybody always in a perfect paper suit and if you go to work in your yard in a paper suit what happens it tears apart right away right and that's what they've been showing us for over 12 years these paper suits a paper suit needs to be six feet thick to protect you at a nuclear meltdown by the way and none of these are academics or scientists or journalists in their paper suits no loss of of happy life expectancy indicators just uh, a lot of studies are meant to downplay what happened right but why did you do endless, uh, in this particular file, I got 500 studies on Fukushima, and I'm not going to try to go through any of these from here on out. I'm just going to flash through, and we'll say goodnight to everybody. And my apologies not getting a show out tonight. I had a, a flu now for about three weeks or something, four weeks. No, not four. Well, it's going on four weeks now. And hydrogen peroxide basically just gave me my, my lungs back. My Just got rid of my misery. Because I've been hacking, dry hacking all day. I did a few hours ago go out um, to the middle of the harbor because I wanted to put the boat in the water tomorrow. And this is a video of a shot. It's pretty obvious I'm not going out on the boat tomorrow. <laughs> No intention is going to get the daylights kicked at me tomorrow. We're looking for the migratory uh, species that are missing. And so there's around 46 million birds didn't show up this year. We got 17 trips in. We've had a lot of breakdowns, a lot of problems, a lot of heartaches. It's been a really tough uh, year. Kidney stones. Started off with kidney stones. And everything else followed heart attacks and seven stones put in. But uh, I'm not going out on that creature tomorrow. I, I don't got anywhere to hide. It's the open ocean, right? So the wind's been pretty good the last couple of days, so the seas are actually getting down quite a bit. But that's the middle of the harbor. I'm able to get out there.
and uh, I'm not going to drag the boat down, put it in the water just to go beat myself up. And my boat is not working that good, so there's a good chance if something goes wrong, I can be, in, I got a kicker, but you can get yourself in a whole lot of trouble on this coastline if you're not, if you're not doing your due diligence, let's put it that way. All right, my apologies for not getting a decent video tonight. I'm sure nobody, everybody understands it. <coughs> That's that dry hackler. So in a few days, <coughs> that's the way I've been all day. So in a few days, that should make a big difference. But I just done two hours, and I just used a little bit of hydrogen peroxide on my chest, and my face, and my head, and my arms, and I got instant relief. In fact, as soon as this video is over, that's exactly what I'm going to do again. Is um, That's exactly what I'm going to do again. I'm just trying to get a song to play there as a fade out song. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see everybody tomorrow night. Hopefully, I get enough peroxide on me. I'll be back in top shape tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody.